Hi everyone, and welcome back to Recorder on the Wall, Episode 3. My name's Jeremy. I'm Pete. And today we are going to be covering the third and final part slash book of the first Redwall book, Redwall. And it's titled The Warrior. And yeah, it's just the two of us for the moment. Uh, we may get to read later on, but Matthias had to cancel. So we'll catch him another time. So yeah, this is the definitely the shortest version. Uh, or shortest version. Shortest of the three books. Yep. By far. And uh, it shows because the storyline just kind of wrap up pretty quickly here. A lot happens in it, though. Yeah. When we last left off, uh, Matthias said, well, he was technically in the mouth of a large oh. cat. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to need a new hero. Hero. <laughs> no, of course he doesn't die. <laughs> cat spits him out, saying he can't stand the taste of mice, and then says, hey, and then Matthias has the great idea of playing dead. Apparently he's become an opossum. Which I would also like to, to point out: Why would playing dead prevent him from wanting to still eat him? Uh, yeah. If anything, free meal. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, this one won't run away. <laughs> okay, sorry. Channel my little Hannibal Lecter there. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not gonna eat him. We get introduced to the cat who calls himself Squire Gingiver. And he's like, yeah, I can't stand the taste of mice. And he is one Aristocat. If it wasn't for the Disney's movie, I'd hurt you. <laughs> yes, that's that's what inspired that pun. We'll go yeah, with I that. Yeah, I get it, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I, I like him. I like. Uh, yeah. Is it Gingivere or Gingivere? I always read a Gingivere. How's it spelled? Uh, G I N. Oh, where's my book? Hang on. I think I got it right when I typed it. Let me just make sure. You do things while I'm looking at this. Mm. Honestly, <laughs> no, I think you have it right in the notes here, but honestly, this could literally go any either way. And since neither of us have the audiobook on hand to get the Jake's official uh, official pronunciation yeah it's awesome yeah. goes to the whole uh, goes to the whole uh, what was the vermin we disagreed on pronunciation um, I always yeah I think it's up to interpretation so I'm just going to go with King of Beer how I've always pronounced it in my head okay So yeah, he's like, oh, okay, sorry about oh, that. I, I, Julian is his first name, so we can just call him that. Fair enough, Julian. There we go. He's like, oops, sorry about that. I <laughs> totally didn't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> and Matthias probably needs a shower. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of therapy. <laughs> Talk about avoiding the jaws of death. Uh. Or would they be the jaws of life since he didn't eat him? Hey, question for the philosophers. <laughs> so yeah, he that uh, gets out. He's like, "Oh, you want to see Captain Snow? I know where he is, but he's a jerk. You have, don't want to see." Yep. Have fun being lunch. Have fun in the store. Go in the castle, kid. <laughs> Think I'll make it? It'd take a miracle. <laughs> I got to see that movie recently in a in an outdoor showing. It was oh, awesome. Oh, nice. I love that movie. Yeah. Yes, folks, we're talking about uh, the Princess Bride. Princess Bride. <laughs> so now, for copyright reasons, we will never play the audio from it. But hey, we can't. This movie, we can't reference it. <laughs> so yeah, then we, get, goes in, we get introduced to Captain Snow. By introduced, he pretty much slams right into Matthias. Right? This one tries to eat him. <laughs> But he sees the metal and he's like, oh. Yeah. And he's like, why don't you come into my lair? And Matthias is like, that seems a little deathy. He's like, oh, <laughs> can't really blame you. <laughs> but Matthias gets him to tell him where the snake is and it gets uh, 
and what's his name? Uh, Captain Snow, so amused by the idea of Matthias going to fight the snake, he's like, oh, <laughs> you're not going to make it bet back. So they make a bet on it. <laughs> and Snow agrees never to eat a mouse or shrew again yep. if Matthias can make it back. And I like how he said, like, I'd ask you to give my, I guess you can't give my regards to Basil because you'll be in the snake's stomach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I like how birds in this franchise kind of vary on allegiances. I'd say chaotic neutral. Yeah. Like, you have some that are straight up evil. You have some that are right in the middle, like Captain Snow. You have some that are good, like, um, oh God, I can't remember his name, but the um, Sun Flash's bird companion in. Or the guess. Big Hawk from Matameo. Yep. Um, um, and I, I like the fact that Snow isn't, he's not a villain, so he's not really evil, it's just he's following the owl's basic nature, which is to eat mice and other small creatures that just happens to put him at odds with our heroes, who are mice and woodland creatures. Yep. And, I mean, you can't blame him for it, but you can also see why the shrews are pretty uh, afraid of him yeah i'd probably be afraid of him too yep so back at the ranch what's going <laughs> on <laughs> back at the plot no. <laughs> yeah. uh Clooney's forces get dispatched by soup awesome <laughs> well to be accurate th is this the tunnel dig right no, no, no. This is when Cornflower throws the soup into the rat's face, and then they set the siege tower on fire. Yep. Now, admittedly, the animated series, which we will get to in t due time, um, Sage is better where she just breaks a lantern on it. <laughs> um, well, they do that afterwards. Uh, she throws the soup, and then <laughs> the guy, I think it was Brother Alpha, it was whoever she was giving the soup to, then they throw the... Uh, lantern onto it and then right and then Point is, there's a <laughs> Clooney, there's a very nice Clooney, obviously thinking clearly starts yelling at his burning troops telling them to get back on the blaze and get into the friggin red wall oh i'm sorry sir i'm quite on fire <laughs> I, I just i could just think of Clooney's thought process as he's walking away from this like oh, well i just lost a bunch of troops they think i'm nuts if that plan failed, at least I can get back to my ten. Oh, God, why? Yeah. <laughs> says he gets back to his tent. <laughs> they, he finds a giant arrow in it. <laughs> yes, let's talk about that. Now, he's not the first Horde leader to realize that, hmm, maybe having a body double or someone take my place temporarily is a good idea. We, we'll see this with later ones. But... He, should, he basically, he's impressed with what Cheesy Steve can do, even though the battering ram ends up being a fluke. Yep. Right. Yep, and they dump uh, bees on it. Bees, my god. <laughs> and I want, yes, folks, I made a very obscure reference to Linkara. Now, it. I'm sure you were all expecting the Nicolas Cage, not the bees, but shame on you. We <laughs> strive for a higher standard of references on this show. They'd better wasp out. And then he makes puns like that. <laughs> hey, I'm no yellow jacket. And I don't just bumblebee around. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, you better be. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Clooney's had two of his major strategies be defeated fairly easily and he's just... and then finally he sees his lieutenant who he's given uh, basically second in command a pr well, as chief thief assumed he's second in command mm -hmm. and he finds him dead well chief thief got the bright idea to dress in Clooney's armor <laughs> and Constance and the beaver decided hey look there's Clooney let's shoot a giant arrow at him <laughs> headshot <laughs> well no more accurately it's a body shot <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is the only time we ever see a beaver in the series, to my rec recognition. Yeah, 
I can't think Bye. of and he's not even look... he's not even named either. No, he's just the solitary beaver. Bye. I look forward to never seeing your species again. <laughs> Thanks for trying to kill Clooney. Um so yeah, the Red Wallers decide, okay, we're just going to snipe him with a long-distance arrow. And don't get me wrong, there's precedent in medieval battles for this. You know, there, there's a weapon called a scorpion that can shoot bolts a lot farther than any human can. But uh, they don't try this again, and you brought that up in your notes. Yeah, they. it does work. They just kill the wrong rat. So it's like, why don't you try this a second time? And well, you have to presume Clooney would have contingency plans after this if he was in the right state of mind or at least a smart leader would say hmm maybe we should move out of range or at least <laughs> out of direct line of sight either that or maybe they couldn't find another uh thing to turn into a giant arrow oh uh, that's also true but still uh, i don't know it just feels like it feels like in star trek where they have those episodes where they come up with um big giant piece of technology or they find out this new discovery and then it's never mentioned again yeah. I was just thinking of a Galaxy Quest version of this series. <laughs> we are Clatoon from the Review Nebula. You must help us. <laughs> what? what? Uh? That, that reminds me of one of my friends just got Zelda Breath of the Wild and mm-hmm. uh, the way he described running into one of the first giant monsters was i found grignack <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty accurate yep <laughs> um so moving along uh so not only is Clo- two of major Clooney's plans fail the third one fails in pretty catastrophic Spectacular action too spectacular fashion of all right dig in the tunnel dig in the tunnel we're gonna get there we're gonna get there oh god why the red of wars pour hot boiling water Water? Just water. Yep, it's just boiling yeah. water, and they all get either scalded to death or buried alive. Or trampled as they try to get the heck out. Yeah, so, uh... So, this is a bad day for Clooney at the office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like just walking away. He's probably just watching it and then walks away while, like, the sad Charlie Brown music plays. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. But accurate. Um, and then, but then Clooney remembers that uh, a couple of his soldiers found some dormice, and he goes, "All right, when in doubt, build a bonfire and scare the hell out of people." Mm-hmm. This part is really creepy, where he flat out just says, "I'm going to eat you if you don't do what I say." And here's the thing about real life rats, people: they are carnivorous when they need to be, so. I don't think that would, Jace would have actually gone this far, yeah, far in the series in general, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yep. The fact that they mentioned that they're quite plump looking is like, oh, that's chilling. Yeah. Um, so then we get to Matthias and the Shrews getting to Asmodeus's lair, his underground lair, if you will. And uh, uh, that's a reference I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> and we're getting we're getting real deep about that. <laughs> so they get there, and Gossam falls in. So, like this part just kind of confuses me a little bit when you really think about it. So she falls in to the lair, and then Logalog and Matthias go in like a couple minutes later. As Matthias is wandering around, he finds her dead body way far away from where Asmodeus is. And then when he finds him, Asmodeus is fast asleep. Hmm. So in those five minutes, he found her, bit her, and then was like, all right, I'm going back to sleep, and like slithered all the way back through the uh, thing. I guess he just have, would eat her later. I guess so. You know, yeah. it, he doesn't really have a refrigerator, I guess. Yeah. Keep refreshing. But uh, it is a good, like, oh, shoot moment. And Sparks Logalog panicking. And it's like, we need to be very quiet. Oh, my God! I found a dead body! 
And the snake wakes up. <laughs> and you can hear Matthias just like kind of face, uh, do a face palm. Yep, just, oh, log a log. <laughs> <laughs> and the snake's just like, the snake is, uh, take exception to the fact that Matthias has gotten the sword back. Yes, we finally have the sword. Yep. I feel like when he obtained the sword, it should have played like this whispered version of the Master Sword theme from Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. And then we get the awesomeness that is Matthias not only evading Asmodeus, but breaking through the hypnosis with the help of Martin Spirit, and literally does, which I don't think this was intentional, but there's an earlier moment where it's like cut off the head of the snake so the body dies, which was Constance's plan. Matthias does just that. He cuts off Asmodeus' head. Yeah. Uh, although this kind of ev evokes uh, shades of, uh, like, the Disney's Jungle Book. Not the recent live-action movie, which is actually surprisingly better than I thought it would be. Um, but I'm talking the 60s one. Mm-hmm. With Ka. Oh, I haven't seen it in a long time. Well, except Ka was more comedic and not... Oh, God. <laughs> Scary. I'm going to inject my venom into you and kill you and eat you! Okay. <laughs> and then, of course, they get back and Captain Snow is like, oh, Gosh, of all the bets I've ever made! <laughs> and the shrews start dancing right in front of him. Yep, and he's like, oh, Come on! <laughs> At this point, they're just kind of being jerks to him. And he also, as part of the vet, he also agrees to make peace, peace with uh, Julian. Julian, so they're buddies again. And I get the sense that these guys were old drinking buddies and wingmen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Sorry, oh, cat's got on. my tongue. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> Wow, look at that angry mob outside for abusing puns. <laughs> it is quite punishing. Oh, oh, You set that one up for me, dude. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate you. Oh. Thanks so a lot. Wise, wise finally has the sword, and he's like, oh, right, Redwall. Imminent death. <laughs> Crap, 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 crap. Yep. Then we get um, that but moment that you were... back at the actual main plot. Yep. Well, we also get the moment where uh, you brought up uh, twice so far about how it's only a sword. Yep. Remember how during the last episode I was like, you might want to read part three? Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> well, it's not explicit, mind you. But Gingivir and... Julian basically. Well, Julian Flatman when... says to him, he's like, "It's it's a magnificent magnificent sword, but it's just a sword." And he even mentions that after the thing with snow, where he's like, "Maybe the sword is magic." Personally, I like to believe it's the mouse that wields it, or the yeah. warrior that wields it. You are a wizard, Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> I know that reference. Yeah. Uh, but I also like how Matthias gets this lesson before the final battle rather, rather than afterwards. Uh -huh. Because this way, at the end, it's he knows that it was he that defeated Clooney, not just the magic sword. Yep. Though the sword does help. So, Clooney's final plan to get inside the Abbey, that actually works. Yep. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. He uh, basically convinces the father of the family is captured what's his name um plumpin i think yeah i want you to go inside the redwall abbey and open the doors <laughs> <laughs> and i can see one of the horde members be like couldn't shadow have done this back it's <laughs> this is the first time this plan can work this is the first yeah. time this plan can work good so the horde gets sneaks in silently. They manage to tie up Constance while she's still sleeping, and then beat her unconscious. <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> she's asleep, and they beat her unconscious. Hey, she's—it's less likely she's going to wake up. This is, is true. 
and, you know, kill all of that. <laughs> I like how she's the one they also take the most precautions with. Like, everyone else is like, all right, we'll just tie you up a little bit. It's like, no, we must throw a weighted net on her, beat her into unconsciousness, and then randomly beat her over the head again so she doesn't actually break free. I honestly <laughs> hope she doesn't have brain damage after this. <laughs> so she almost breaks free, too, and they're like, oh, shoot, and starts smacking her again. <laughs> yeah. If Clooney was smart, he would have outright killed her. Yeah. I'm just saying. And, but then we get to Clooney's proclamations and renaming, such as the Lake of Drowned Mice. And just, I was almost ready for him to talk about eating babies. Yeah. Which, actually, I guess he already did threaten to do to the door mice. Yeah, but he's he's riding on a high because he's like, okay, yeah. I finally won, and nothing can stop me now. Cody, I've come to stop you. I said nothing can stop me now. I'm totally not turning around and acknowledging that. <laughs> and yeah, Matthias is less, he's got the sword, he's got the shield, and he's like, yeah, hey, Clooney. He's got the tools, he's got the talent, it's battle time. So Clooney's just like, uh, oh. And he starts freaking out because seeing, he's seeing Martin the Warrior in the flesh. <laughs> and then the epic duel begins, and oh god, Matthias just cut Kilconi in half. Yeah, yeah, he did. That's brutal. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Constance beats one rat into unconsciousness and starts using him to beat others, which, that's actually always funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, but before all the battle begins, uh, he... Clooney does kind of poison Abbott Mortimer after he stands up yeah. stands up to him which I do like how they distract from this tube is the battle starts immediately afterwards and they don't mention it until it doesn't come back until afterward after the battle um, mm -hmm. so it's like oh shoot this is happening now and then after the battle you're like oh god I forgot about that Mm -hmm. um, so Matthias and Clooney are he's Matthias is kind of ch chasing after him and Clooney's trying to uh, uh, run away <laughs> and he's and like time sparrows, out time out time out <laughs> and the sparrows and the shrews come in and start helping to murder oh, everyone yeah. I love how the sparrows pick up rats and throw them into the center of the lake so they drown <laughs> um, I really hope they're retrieving those bodies because if that's the Abbey water source <laughs> It's Drowned Rat Lake. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it, it's it's a big final battle. Uh, Clooney and Matthias, really, uh, they, they go at it pretty hard. Yep. Uh, at, until at the end where they fight in the bell tower and Clooney takes Friar Hugo hostage. And Matthias is like, ugh, and tells Clooney to let him go and he'll come down from the bell tower. Clooney's like, all right, and he sends the friar away. So then Matthias is like, all right, I'm coming down. Give me one quick sec. And he severs the rope of the Joseph bell, and it falls and lands on Clooney. And just to add insult to injury, Matthias reaches the bottom of the steps and goes, I kept my promise. I came back down. A little bit of an Aladdin, Aladdin moment there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like it, though, also, he beats him by using his head... Because we've already we already got to see Matthias use his like physical strength and courage and everything to kill Asmodeus, so we already know he's strong. So this helps us show us like oh he also knows how to think. Mm hmm And it, it I mean it it yeah. Jake's implies here that either Matthias or Clooney could win if they actually had to fight all the way to the end. Yeah. Clooney tried to cheat and Matthias cheated right back. <laughs> so. And yeah, so battle's over, and Matthias, uh, Matthias wins. Constance beats up a lot of them. Yep, and everybody's so does... happy. And oh god, the Abbot's dying. Well, don't get me wrong. There's a number of other dead Red Wars and the most of the horde. Yeah, um, both and oh, the horde and... that escapes runs into Julian and Snow, who massacre them. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, Snow's got uh, dinner for dinners for a few a while then. I can see that be like, is it all right if I eat them? Yeah, go for it. Yay! <laughs> so, 
So yeah, and uh, Abbott's dying, and Mortimer's dying very slowly from poison. That sucks. <laughs> ah, shit. Oh, and he's like, okay, so... He's like, uh, Matthias, you and Cornflower will be married. Your sword Cornflower. will be called Rat Death. Which and, is but never mentioned again. We'll never call it that ever again after the end of this book, because it sounds stupid. It's like, I mean, I... <laughs> maybe swords was a thing back in the medieval period, but mm. yeah. Yeah, the sword of Martin is good enough. And he's like, Brother Alf, who has had four lines of dialogue, he'll be the next abbot. <laughs> and Matthias, you won't join us as a brother, but as a warrior. And now I must eventually die yeah. You have to wonder if Cornflower's in the back like, uh, what? <laughs> She's like, you're oh, lucky I have the hots for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he, there has been shipping here, Lord knows, in the build-up to this, but, um, yeah, she just take, totally accepts it. Yeah, I think it probably would have been better if they would have just resolved the two of them deciding this, but, eh. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're, again, we're going off medieval period, arranged marriages were common enough, yeah. so, yeah. And in all honesty, the women in, like, the female characters in this book get a lot more respect than women did in that era, so. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Jinx took a lot of heat for a long time. It, 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 it would, yeah. With the designated warrior who would wield the sword, it wasn't a girl character for a very long time, till Triss, practically. Yeah, Triss. Uh, but that's not to say we don't have some good female characters. Uh, Cornflower proves that she's pretty darn capable on her own in this book, and we're going to see a lot more of that in the next one. Yep. With the B, with the B plot. Mm-hmm. And, and by the time we hit... Uh, by the time we, we hit... Um, what's her name? Mariel? Yep. Yeah. Female warriors are going to be pretty standard. Yep, shoot, and some of the villains are female, such as... Oh, so I think, uh, in Mothflower, yeah. Yep. So, no, I think they get a pretty good representation in this. Sort of. I mean, we brought this up before. A lot of the vermin hordes seem to be predominantly male. So This is true. Which begs a lot of questions that we don't need to go into. Um, <laughs> um, but then at the very end, I always, I don't know about you, but I always really enjoy these epilogues in these books where yeah. it's part of like a journal entry or in the prequel stories to the first book where it's like people actually telling the story. Mm -hmm. I, I've always liked those and I thought they kind of gave this series like that's part of what gave it its personality. Yeah. I, I really like those moments. So I, I like the ending to this where it's from the um, like journal of, I think it's Abbot Alf. Oh, no, it's uh, John Church Mouse is mm -hmm. writing the writing in this where he brings up Madame Mayo where everyone's like, yeah, Matthias Mortimer Methuselah was way too long of a name. <laughs> Given most everyone in this entire series only has one name. Yeah. So, He's instead special. of a... First and last name, yeah. Because I'm sure the son of the Abbey Warrior is not going to have any kind of ego at all, right? No, I'm sure come his book, which is named after him, he's going to be perfectly well-adjusted and just a normal mouse. And that's totally the one we're doing next, even if Mossflower was next in publishing. Yeah. Well, we'll do... Uh, Madame Mayo next, and then we'll jump all the way back to the beginning of the timeline. Yeah. Well, you, that's what you want to do, or do you want to do Mossflower and then jump? I think it's best just to jump back to the beginning, build up to Mossflower. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, because Lord Brocktree does give us some more insight into the Wildcat family as well, and has and also kind of helps. Well, granted, Mossflower isn't right after that one, but it gives us some background information. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yay! So we're gonna do Madame Mayo, and then yeah, I guess we'll start on the way back. So when do you want to? And then we'll figure out when we're gonna do the cartoon eventually. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. We'll see you next time. All right. Take care, everyone. <laughs>